All right, guys, welcome to the video. This right here is a miniature Philadelphia Eagle. It's actually Eddie the Eagle. And uh, if you follow any sports, they're not in it anymore. <laughs> so, how does the Seahawks do this year? <laughs> the same. No, they lost the first round. It doesn't matter. Yeah. They're, not at the, they're not playing this weekend. You don't be throwing like trains Hey, I can do whatever around. I want because you know what? Brian did give this to me I a gave few it years to you. ago. And I was very appreciative of Brian. And then I put it in my truck. And this is the reason why the Eagles won the Super Bowl last year is because of Eddie. In other news, we're going to try to find a rabbit today. And Eric is going to be the shooter. We've got a shotgun back here, a 20 gauge, along with some game loads. Let's read the specs on these things. 20 gauge, two and three quarters length, 1,225 velocity, FPS. It's feet per second. Seven eighths ounce shot, seven and a half shot, GL 207. They got the, these ginormous antelope jackrabbits out here, which can get up to like 12 pounds. So they're pretty ridiculous. They kind of look like if you see a photo of them, somebody holding it, you think it's photoshopped because the rabbit's so ridiculously big. We're gonna be looking for those normal jackrabbits, cottontails, potentially eating quail we see running around. We were not able to get a javelina tag, unfortunately. And then coos deer. So that's kind of like what's on the agenda today. We had some success last night. Brian Call, Ryan Lampers, each tagged out. Both killed deer in one day. That's pretty crazy. That is a yeah, successful cool. day. Randy said this is the third or fourth year, fourth year, I think. And that, those are the first deer that have ever been taken. So it's not an easy hunt by any means. There's a lot of deer, but it seems challenging to get in a position to get a shot at a deer. We got a rabbit this morning. Shells in hand. Need a bell quicker. I'm trying to teach Eric how to be a road rabbit hunter. It's taking some time, okay? It's gonna take some time. So uh, it's all private? It is until we pass through it and then it so I'm sure there's an it. easement. But it looks like the road ends out there. Yeah. We'll go find another spot. It's a great thing about Arizona. There is a lot of public land out here for you to get out and take advantage of. Okay. Good luck. All right, guys. We are going to go. Look? Yeah. We're going to go give this coyote call and stuff a try. Logan and I are just going to walk around this grassy knob. And being rookie coyote callers, this looked the best from what we've just been driving around. It's just the most open, because everywhere we came from was like super thick. They're gonna go look for coos deer. We're gonna go look for coyotes. And uh, man, it'd be cool if we can call one in.
It's pretty so much call a pretty solid nap game right here. Going pad. pretty pad underneath. Nice shades. Pillow. Chair for the legs. Then you just do the old sun shade. <laughs> Cover it up. <laughs> Hola. It's nap time, guys. It's two o'clock. Yeah, we just uh, totally wrecked Logan's world. Let me show you this clip real quick. Watch this. Got him. <laughs> that was a Got him. What's that in with that E? <laughs> that was cottontail. Dude, this cottontail got him. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get eaten by the cottontails, Logie. Just trying to take a nap. That was funny. Now I'm going to take the, the coyote call. Walk over this ridge right here. Away from these guys. Get on the back side of that. And make a stand. I want to get a coyote on this trip so bad. I haven't had any luck yet. We made like three stands with no dogs, so... I'm gonna go try my luck. Have fun. Good luck. Get him. Get him. <laughs> oh, I just about had a heart attack. I flushed a covey of quail. Is that what you call them? About five or six, and about gave me a heart attack. Especially when I'm sitting here thinking I'm gonna see a coyote. But uh, here's the game plan. I kind of like this this valley right here. So I'm gonna either get up on this yellow side or the other side and just try to call that valley. See if I can't get something come in kind of from the, the flats down in the bottoms. Everywhere I've tried so far has kind of been in the canyon, so I'm gonna try to get down in the valley. Always looking for a coos deer shed too. Dang it. Just had my chance at a gray fox. Missed him. I don't know how. I'm, I forgot the shooting sticks on this stand and I... Thing was only a hundred yards. That was so freaking sweet. That thing came out of the creek bottom right here, right up and right on top of that rock. Perfect opportunity. Dang it. Just gonna go double check, make sure I missed, but I saw a lot of dust fly, so I'm guessing I missed. Dang it, guys, that was everything I've been waiting for. Oh man. That thing pinpointed the call. Just pinpointed it, went right to it. That was so freaking cool. Damn, I'm shaking. Oh, I'm bummed. How did I miss that thing? Wouldn't be surprised if I was shooting high that close with this gun. We'll go, oh, he's over there. He's over there. I did hit him. Let's go over there. Turns out I did get him, guys. That third shot put him down. I could actually just barely see him just to the left of this cactus. Whew. Pretty cool little animals. Dang. Man, he came right in. So pretty. Holy cow, they're cool. I don't know where I hit him. Dang, is that pretty or what? He came in just like a coyote would. And I'll tell you what, he had that, he had that call pegged. 
This little rock outcropping right here is where he stood at first and I missed him right there. Holy cow. What a cool little animal. Gray fox. Finally, my first successful solo call. And you want to know what's funny is I posted up on that hill thinking I could pull something out of these drainages. That guy came right down the draw that I walked down. Just goes to show you kind of never know where they're going to end up coming from. They can come up from any corner, but trust me, I was pretty excited when I first saw him and he was committed. He came in and he must have only been 50 yards from the call when I shot at him. What a cool, cool looking animal. Wow, pretty. I'm gonna take this back to the truck to show the guys, but we got the first successful call. Thanks to Garrett and Micah for letting me use their call and basically learning everything that I, I don't know anything, but learning just setups and Things like that learned all from them and now I got my first successful predator with a calling stand and calling sequence. Yeah. Look at that guy. Dude, those things are so beautiful. Is that cool or what? Great fox. Yeah, those are the ones I told you that I've seen people like call them in so close they like come and jump on them. I had done probably five, six sequences, you know, like one to two minutes each, pause for one to two minutes. Of course, I'm thinking they're this way because I just walked this way, scanning, and all of a sudden the call's off, you know, and just whoop, right out of like the ditch. I'm kind of not hidden very well because the sun's right on me. I didn't have the shooting sticks either, so I was like, okay. So it was like, dude, he just beelined it and he disappeared for a minute. He just popped up on this rock. And the call's 50 yards from him. He's looking right at it. I'm just like, off my knee, you know? And I think that one, I just remember seeing dust and he jumped off the rock like, like that. Round two, click. Like, what? I know I put more than one round in here. Jamie or another. And he had kind of gone down and kind of threw one of those tall cactus things. I could see him standing there. And I thought I missed almost just because like the dust, you know, mm -hmm. I was like, well, I was filming. I was like, I'm going to go over there. And then I just saw like his tail flop up. Just like got the coolest black line. It was so sweet, man. You know, cause of course you're sitting there like, man, it's like tree stand hunting or oh, ground yeah. blind hunting. You're just, man, you know, is this a good setup? Is there even anything even close? Should I leave? And all of a sudden, choo, 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 through the yellow grass, I'm like, dang. That's that cool, was so cool. They're that was pretty, so yeah. fun. They're pretty, huh? Yeah, when you see them, it's almost just like, oh my gosh. Did you gosh. know what it was when you saw them? I knew, yeah, like right when I saw them, I was just like, that's not a coyote, you know? <laughs> Confirmed. Brennan, what are you chewing on there? Is there a quail? I believe we're just fried, right? Yeah, nice. fried quail. John cooked up Andy. quail. He's got He's like, sandhill crane and Dewey sausage. Small. Tamales. Best food here, dude. Kind of a yeah, right. Small game feast. Fresh tamales, fresh quail, uh, fresh sandhill crane. Just doesn't suck. Doesn't suck at all. You keep saying fresh. Yeah, fresh. Like yeah. killed or made within the last week. Yep. Chimichangas. You're Loving the man. It. Good stuff. You're the man. <laughs> You're never going to go hungry with me around. I like that. Well, John informed us earlier this week, this is the area that the uh, flour tortilla was born in, right? Right. This is Sonoran cuisine. And what's the three, there can only be three ingredients in the flour tortilla? Flour, salt, lard. Lard. Pork lard. Specifically. Cool. And then tonight he informs us, so what else was born here? Chimichangas. Chimichangas, born in Phoenix. Because the wow. name chimichanga is actually a derivative of a curse word. Oh, so really? The story is that a, a guy was making burritos in the kitchen. One fell in the fryer. He cursed, and that's they they really? took it out and actually ate it, and that's how the name. Comes and they're like, more. this is amazing. Yeah, it's a derivative of a, of a Spanish curse word. So, just eating good food, learning learning about things with Big John here. Oh, oh my goodness! Yes, I have one. Lampers. Lampers. Look at that thing. Somewhere when I grow up, I'm gonna shoot my mom. 
I want to be like Landers when I get older. Stop being so competitive. Wow. That has got so much character too, the way it comes all the way back in and then forth in the back and lean forward. Yeah, I have zero knowledge of Kuzier, but that's like a lot bigger than anything I've seen, I think. That's officially called a dandy. A dandy. And uh, yeah. the other buck that's back there, he's smaller, but he just goes like, yes. Oh, really? There's none of this. Do a recap too. Guys, listen. Don't be jealous of my hair, okay? I don't take my hat off very often, but when I do, people are like, man, sick hair. End of day number two and a half, right? Yep. And we have, uh, so it's Wednesday, we have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we have to be out of here by Sunday morning. We have three full days to hunt. We want to kill a coos deer really bad. We really want to kill anything. Like Eric killed the gray fox today, but we can kill a coos deer, we can kill quail, we can kill ducks, we can kill coyotes. Gray foxes, bobcats, Kuda Mondays, and jackrabbits. So we have like a plethora of things we can go hunt. Guys, Arizona's so rad. Like there's opportunity for you to come down here and experience a good hunt. And I was just telling our good buddy, uh, Ryan Lampers, he's like, I think this is gonna be an annual thing. I said, what better way to hone your skills, your hunting skills, your archery skills, than coming down here in January, no other hunts going on and hunting these these creatures over the counter every year. It will make you a better hunter coming to hunt these things. And you can do it every year. You don't have to draw it. You just come down and do it. You guys should look into it. But tomorrow's gonna be a good day. I've had a lot of high hopes for Thursday, and that's tomorrow, okay? Let's do it.